So let's look at a couple of examples and just kind of hone in your thinking, home in your thinking on the uh, previous fallacies we covered since the last example. So the weak analogy, undestable explanation, slippery slope, false cause, and then authority and popularity. So again, I recommend pausing now and taking a few minutes to determine which fallacies the categories fit there, which categories those passages fit, if any. Okay, so the first one, I strongly oppose the sale of alcohol at um, County golf course, the idea of allowing people to drink wherever and whatever is disgraceful, it can only lead to more alcoholism, drunk driving, perverted parties, and who knows what else. So this seems to be a pretty textbook example of um, slippery slope, right? They're saying that allowing people to do something basic, drink on this golf course, is going to lead to some severe outcomes. And he needs to provide more evidence, the speaker does that there is a connection between those two, that just allowing the drinking of alcohol is necessarily going to lead to perverted parties and who knows what else. Right? So the speaker starts with something more innocent uh, and leads to something more uh, exaggerated. So we'd call that a slippery slope. Second one, what's all the fuss? Everyone has done it. Why should you care if one more person does it? Another textbook example of popularity. It doesn't even say what it is, but it's, of course, a reasoning process we've heard at some point in our lives um, or been aware of somehow. Um, everyone's doing it, right? So what if one more person does it? Still wouldn't make it right. What if that thing is murdering people? <laughs> what if the author is like, hey, come on, everyone in the room has murdered someone else. Come on, just kill one more person. I mean, just if, if something is wrong to do or you shouldn't do it, doing it one more time or the fact that others are doing it isn't a good justification uh, for doing it. And then finally, uh, we have a weak analogy. Now, I bet some of you guys were thinking hasty generalization for a second. Now, the first thing I'd say is, remember, hasty generalization was not an option. But even if it was, weak analogy would be a better option. And that's probably because some of you are misunderstanding what generalize means. Sometimes we take the term generalize and we just basically say it means something bad. Right? We're just like, oh, dude, you insulted me. You're kind of generalizing. Generalizing has a specific meaning. It means you take something smaller and you draw a conclusion about something bigger from that small part, right? the sample. You take a sample and you generalize to a broader thing. What's happening in that passage about the Sun and Boy Scouts is not a generalization from a smaller thing to a large thing. It's a comparison of one thing to another. That's why it's a false analogy because it's a comparison of one son to another son. It's not a general, you don't generalize from one person to another, you compare. You generalize from one person to many people. So just trying to help you understand a, a common error that people in general make regarding generalizations. Uh, so once again, that is a weak analogy because it assumes that her son or his son, whoever's making that argument, is like the son of somebody else. But it doesn't stipulate any other similarities, so it'd be a weak analogy. For all we know, the other son is completely anti things like Boy Scouts and um, has very different interests.